Hi, welcome to another ArcGIS tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to derive the order of streams using a DEM uh, using ArcGIS as your primary GIS tool. So, just to give you a bit of an overview of what stream order really means, I have just pulled up this uh, web page from USGS. Uh, as you can see over here, the the headwater branches, which are actually the lowest, which are actually the smallest streams, gets uh, ranked as number one. And if two streams of uh, of the same rank gets uh, meets at a confluence, then starting from that confluence, we increase the the order from the the previous rank to a higher rank. Uh, in this case, you can see that it increases from one to two, and so on. Now something important to notice is that uh, at a confluence like this, if a stream with a lower order meets uh, a stream with a higher order, we still actually maintain the, the order of the stream with the higher order. And so on. this actually lets us distinguish quite easily uh, what, what, are the majors, what, what, are the, what are the sort of uh, major rivers and what are the sort of uh, contributing uh, tributaries to the major river. So that's basically the, the objective of this tutorial. So let's get started with the DEM. So I'm just going to run through the basic uh, steps of deriving the stream network, which we can do through the Spatial Analyst tool. And under the Hydrology tab, you can uh, first fill your DEM, because there could be uh, sinks in the raw DEM that you might download from uh, from your website. So as my input surface raster, I'm just going to use uh, my DEM, my raw DEM. I'm going to name this as fill. Alright, now we have the fill DEM, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, raw DEM. And next, you need to generate the flow direction raster. So go to the flow direction option and use your fill DEM as your input surface raster. And this one I'm going to name as flow. DIR, flow direction raster. Alright, now we have the flow direction raster, and the next thing that we would need is actually to identify wh where are the flow accumulating points, which we can do by running the flow accumulation tool over here. And your input is going to be your flow direction raster, which you just generated. And this one I'm going to name as flow ACC. Alright, now you can see that we created the flow accumulation raster, but still, uh, as you might see, it's not quite visible to me because I have to do some reclassification of the flow accumulation raster. So what I'm going to do is I just went to the layer properties and over the classified tab over here, instead of going with five classes, I'm just going to limit myself to two classes. And basically what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to allow all the low accumulations, uh, let's say from zero up to a certain number, uh, to be represented in black color. And above from that number, I would like to actually get my accumulations represented in white color. Uh, for example, now just by looking at these numbers, uh, I would like to maybe just play around and see, let's say if I put around 5000 over here. That means from 0 up to 5000, uh, I would like to actually represent it in black color and 5000 upwards, I would like to see it in white color. Now what happens when I do this is, you will actually see more uh, accumulations which is actually represented in white color. Now if you, in case if you decide to go higher on this number, for example if I put around 100,000, you are asking the program to classify all the accumulations which are represented from 0 up to 100,000 in black color, which means that it's not going to be visible, visible for us. And this is only going to leave only the major river lines where the accumulations are higher. And that's something like this. So for, the, for this tutorial, I'm just going to actually uh, stick with maybe around, uh, let's say around 8,000. And something to keep that in, keep in mind is that this number will 
uh, depend on the DE, on the type of DEM that you are using because the accumulation values are going to be differ from uh, one DEM to another DEM based on uh, based on the area that you're actually going doing the analysis for. All right. I'm just going to deactivate this fill and the flow direction layers and if I zoom in a little bit you can actually start seeing the river line uh, quite clearly now the next thing that I'm going to do is when creating when trying to create the stream order you have to actually isolate uh, these two classes uh, let's say in, in into a into a new raster so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the raster calculator which you can open by just typing in raster calculator and I'm going to take this flow accumulation raster and I'm going to assign the flow accumulation to be greater than or equal to 8000 and what this is going to do is if I press OK yeah now you can see that all the flow accumulations which are equal and greater than 8000 got sort of classified into one grid code which is number one and the rest which actually less than 8000 got classified into another color which is uh, green so since this is not that visible I'm just going to change the colors let's say I'll keep the I'll change the the, the color of green from green to white and this I'll probably change it to blue or something like that yeah if you zoom in it's actually going to be a bit more visible alright now you, what you can do in order to generate the the stream order is you can go back to your toolbox and there's this option called stream order so just double click on it and as your input stream raster you have to input this uh, Rust calc raster which actually uh, contains of just the values of your streams and there's another class which actually shows so I'm just going to use this uh, raster calc raster as my input stream raster and over here we are asked to input the flow direction raster I'm going to name this as stream order and the method of stream order uh, this is actually one of the most commonly used uh, stream order techniques, Strahler. So I'm just going to uh, stick with that. We were able to derive the, the, the order of the streams and over here you can see different grid codes starting from 1 to 5 and by looking at this figure I can start seeing that this color river line is probably going to be a stream with a higher order and as we can see it's, it, it has number 5 which has which is actually the highest order and all these small tributaries which are represented in sort of brown color has the lower stream order so these are sort of uh, small tributaries which are meeting much larger uh, streams so next thing as you can see if I zoom in over here still actually this is in the form of a raster you can still see the pixels so I would like to convert this into a network of rivers but in terms of uh, in the form of polygons so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert this raster into a polygon and you can simply use this tool called stream to feature or even you can actually basically use the the raster to po raster to polyline uh, tool in order to actually convert this into uh, into in into a stream network so I'm just going to use this uh, input stream raster to be my stream order. And over here I'm going to specify the flow direction raster again. This one I'm going to name as 
stream network. All right, now we have a polyline network of streams. I'm just going to turn off all these layers, which we do not need right now. And I actually have one catchment over here, which is represented in purple color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually isolate all the streams that are falling within this catchment just by doing a simple clip operation. So I'm just going to type search clip in here. And under the analysis tool, you can find the clip clip tool. And your input feature is now going to be the stream network. And I'm going to clip the stream network by my boundary of the catchment. And this one I'm just going to name it as reverse. Alright, so I can turn off this stream network now, and now you can see all the uh, you can see the river network which actually falls within my uh, specified catchment. So if I go to the attributes table of this rivers, you can see one column called grid code. Now this grid code column is the column which contains the the order of the streams. If I sort this from a to Z, which means from from the lower numbers to the higher numbers. And if I highlight just the the the, the grid codes with number four, you can actually start seeing that this is my major river line. So that's a pretty cool trick. And one more thing that you can do is actually you can okay. I'm going to deselect this. You can go to uh, categories over here and select grid code and click add values. And I'm going to select the order with the, the stream with the higher highest order. Uh, probably going to specify that in blue color and I'm going to increase increase the thickness of the line to be four. And this one, I'm still going to leave actually the purple color. I'm going to increase the thickness to be maybe, let's say, 2.5. This one, I might change the color and I'll increase the thickness to be around 1.5. And lastly, this one I'll change the color to one, uh, change the color to green and keep the width as one. If I click OK, if I remove the catchment, you can now actually start seeing what are the streams of the highest order and what are the contributing tributaries and what are basically the headwater streams which has the least number of order. So I guess this was a pretty cool tutorial uh, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button and obviously share it with your friends. And if you would like to see more cool uh, JS tutorials like this, you can even consider subscribing. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.